first songs came out okay, well it's funny because the album title kind of reflects the fact that we never stopped in a way i mean the, the continuation was I mean, within a couple of years of the last album and certainly the end of the tour within 18 months or so we were already developing very very rough very tentatively developing new material and um the years just started to roll by and we had other things we all had solo projects and different activities which just meant that the process became more and more protracted um and to, and we find ourselves 13 years later which is crazy 13 years but we've you know i think collectively we've released about 40 albums in the inter you know between the three of us we released about 40 albums so it's not like we've been slacking um but as a collective as an entity porcupine tree has obviously taken a long time to 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 make a new record yeah. Probably 2017, 2018, maybe. Um, starting to realise that there was a, a body of work that could form an album. Um, and then, of course, when lockdown happened, it accelerated everything. And we worked more intensely on it and also had to write an extra track or two um, to make the album. Um, and, of course, with lockdown, we had that time. Stephen's tour, solo tour was cancelled. So that's when it all came together. But I think the success of it, in a way, just thinking about it now, is that over that long period from songs written in 2012 to songs written in 2019 or 20, there's still the porcupine tree sound. It's always there. The 13 years didn't really, didn't matter in that respect. There's, there's a core DNA that that happens when the three of us get together and just produces that sound. Well, on this record, there were two very distinct, different processes. One, so first, the first thing to say is that pretty much everything on this record, with one exception, is a collaboration between myself and either Gavin or, or Richard. And because of the nature of working with a drummer or, or in Richard's case, a keyboard player stroke sound designer, it's a very different approach to start with. So with Gavin, we would tend to develop riffs and rhythms, obviously. And with Richard, it was more about the storytelling aspect. What story do I imagine when I hear a certain keyboard sound or a certain texture? And so there's two very different aesthetics straight away there. And I think you can hear, I mean, actually a few people have sort of noted that when you listen to the record, you can almost without knowing, you can hear whether it's a song that started with Richard or started with Gavin. Um, so my job is to, is to find the song within, within the context of what these guys initiate. And uh, so some of the songs were written with jamming with Gavin, with, usually with me on bass. And Richard can tell you a little bit about, I guess, you know, his process of starting things off. Yeah, with me, um, it's, it's a different thing. I'm sending Stephen kind of ideas, musical passages, textures, sounds, um, just trying to create these atmospheres that he might latch on to or find that this, you know, it lights something up and he can, he can picture something. Um, and then he'll take those forward and in unexpected ways to me. But it seemed to work really well, especially on a track called Dignity, because there was a back and forth going on with that track. So even after he'd worked on, on my ideas, it then came back to me when the lyrics were made. And I then took the lyrics and then used them for more sound design. So it was a real progression with that track. <laughs> Well, it's, it's the first time we've, we've done that, really, to this extent. And it, it sets a dividing line between Stephen's solo works and, and Porcupine Tree. And I think that's a good thing. Um, and obviously, it was something that me and Gavin had wanted for a long time, to be more integrated into the process. And now, now we kind of have it with this album, and it just, it just feels like it's, you know, we're more part of it and feel a group feeling 
And as I say, it puts that line down the middle, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean... Otherwise, for, you'd just be making your own solo album again. Yeah, so in the... the, the just to, to expand on that, the, the, the part, in the past, a Porcupine Tree record used to be me coming into the, to the rehearsal studio or whatever and saying, hey guys, here's the new record, I've written it. It, I'm oversimplifying we would always write a few tracks together but generally speaking um, I would present the band with the songs for the new record and then they would have to find the way that they would they would kind of impose their personality stamp their own personality on it and I'm like this time I'm like well there's no point doing that because I have an established solo career so this time if it's going to be porcupine tree music it has to be um, truly collaborative from the very very first moment so that so that idea that the developing the riffs with Gavin, having Richard contribute um, his ideas, which I would then expand, that's all very new. That's all very different for us, as a, a very different kind of approach to the whole creative process. And I think one thing people pick up on with the record is that while everything sounds recognisably Porcupine Tree esque, it also sounds different. So it sounds the same but it sounds different. And I think what's different about it is the fact that you can hear everyone's personality in every single aspect of, of every single song. Well, I've always done, I've all, you know, I'm not the best musician, but I can play a little bit of everything and I've always been like that. I think that the thing is with me is I never thought of myself as a musician. I thought of myself as a singer, songwriter, producer. So, um, or a more pretentious word might be an auteur, you know. So I like the idea that what I do is I make records and whatever I need to do in order to fulfill that, I'll learn just enough, you know, learn just enough guitar just enough bass just enough keyboards piano so as a songwriter it's always been a question of trying to um, change the musical vocabulary that I use because if you write everything on the guitar all the time a kind of sameness begins to you know come into the music so sometimes I sit down at the piano or with this or with a synthesizer sound or with something Richard sends me or a, a rhythm that Gavin sends me and in this case one of the ways I I shook things up for myself was to write on the bass guitar now I write I play the bass guitar like a guitar player most bass players they tend to stay down the bottom and it's very low end and very rhythmic and I'm like a guitar player, I'm right up the top playing melodies and chords on the bass. So straight away, my approach to playing bass is not a conventional uh, bass player's sort of sound and approach. So working with Gavin, we found we, were, we had a very fertile period where me being on the bass and him coming up with these extraordinary sort of polyrhythmic drum pans, we came up with so many riffs in a very short period of time. And uh, that really became the, the, I think that's really the, the true origins of the record, is in these bass and drum riffs that myself and Gavin came up with. A lot of songs like Harridan, Chimera's Wreck, Rat's Return, you can hear the provenance of those songs in, in, in the way they sound. It's basically bass and drum driven songs. And that's something very different from any, any record we've ever made any record I've ever made any record we've ever made to, to start from the point of view of just bass and drums 